said you know did you know that the eyes are thought to have developed about 550 million years ago wow did you know that the leading causes of blindness and low vision in the US are primarily age related eye diseases such as age related macular degeneration, cataract, diabetic retinopathy and glaucoma. Did you know that the eye muscles are the most active muscles in the human body? Makes absolute sense. Did you know that our eyes are like a camera, but the actual visual or vision interpretation happens in the brain and not in the eyes? Did you know that about 80% of a learning actually comes through vision and through the eyes? So having good vision is good for most of us especially children because it also helps with the ability to play sport as much as study. Did you know that diseases like diabetes and hypertension or high blood pressure can be detected during an eye examination? That's because these diseases can change structures and which are visible during eye examination by an ophthalmologist. Interesting. Something called as opsin. So opsins are the universal photoreceptor molecules of all visual systems in the animal kingdom. Now opsins are present in retinal cells and they absorb electromagnetic energy from impacting photons from light, generating electrical impulses. These electrical impulses are the signals travel via the optic nerve to the brain where the conscious perception of color and imagery is created. Of these different types of opsins, there is a special type of opsin called melanopsin, which is involved in the circadian rhythm and pupillary reflex, but not in vision. Now, very interestingly, opsins can even be found on the skin. While most of us are limited to the visible spectrum, people with a condition called aphakia possess ultraviolet vision. Aphakia is the lack of the lens. Aphakia can happen during lens removal for during a cataract operation or in some congenital challenges where the lens is absent. Now the lens, this is because rather, the lens normally blocks ultraviolet light. So without it, these people are able to see beyond the visible spectrum and perceive wavelengths of light of up to 300 nanometers as having a blue-white color. So how many colors can we see? A healthy human eye has three types of cone cells each of which can register about 100 different color shades. Therefore, the number of colors we can distinguish is around a few million. Some claim that the human eye can distinguish about 10 million different colors. Now what's interesting is that we have tetrachromats around us. Now who are tetrachromats? Tetrachromats are people who possess apparent superhuman vision, who are rare, of course, and mostly women, and they have a genetic mutation granting them an extra fourth cone cell. So as a rough approximation based on the number of these extra cones, tetrachromats can see about a hundred million colors. However, Perception of color is a highly subjective ability that varies from person to person. What about focus? 
did you know that because of the need to be agile, our eyes can focus on several objects as we look around us. So we are supposed to be able to focus on at least 50 objects in a second or probably even more. Let's look at the iris. The iris is something that gives the color to our eyes. The iris also controls the size of the pupil which then determines the amount of light that enters the eye. Now people with light colored eyes may be more light sensitive compared to those with dark colored eyes. Also, the dark pigment melanin is what gives brown eyes brown eye color and acts as a natural sun protection in a way. So having brown eyes does help decrease the amount of harmful UV light that can lead to macular degeneration. Okay, so brown is the most common iris color worldwide and is genetically dominant to all other iris colors. Green is the rarest eye color in less than 5% of the world population. Now, although there are countless color combinations, the main color groups are classified as brown, blue, gray, hazel, green, and amber. Did you know that there's a condition called heterochromia? Heterochromia is when an individual has two different color irises, that is one blue and one brown, or, or uh, blue and green. This can be genetic, or caused by a challenge during development, or maybe even triggered by some eye diseases, or in some cases injury. Animals can have heterochromia as well. Let's look into blinking. I am pretty sure that everybody knows what blinking is. It is a rapid closing of the eye. But did you know that there are muscles like the levator palpebrae superioris and the orbicularis oculi that help with blinking? Now, blinking is an essential function of the eye that helps spread tears across and remove irritants from the surface of the eye. The duration of a blink is on an average of between 100 and 400 milliseconds. Did you know that there are three kinds of blinks? Spontaneous, reflex and voluntary. Spontaneous are involuntary blinks which happens all the time and the, and the blinks help the tears cover the surface of the eye and cleans the eye and, and protects the eye. Reflex is also protective, but it only happens when something or uh, a foreign object gets into the eye. Whereas voluntary is when we blink on purpose, either to probably send a message across to someone sitting in front of us, or in order to focus or improve focus. Did you know that blinking can be measured by using instruments like an electromyogram, EMG, or an electrooculogram, an EOG. Now, we find our eyes twitching sometimes for unknown reasons. There is a medical condition called blepharospasm, which is described quite often in textbooks. Now, the most common reasons of these blepharospasms could be tiredness or even using a lot of caffeine. Some of the serious reasons may include neurological challenges like Tourette's syndrome or Parkinson's disease. Well, did you know that on average you will blink approximately 4.2 million times in a single year? Wow! Now, we are very familiar with tears, but did you know that there are three different kinds of tears? Basal tears, emotional tears, and reflex tears. So basal tears are complex and they supply nutrients to the outer structures of the eye and protect the eye from drying out. Emotional tears, on the other hand, which we are most familiar with, are tears that are made when one is overcome with emotion 
like watching a movie, a sad movie, or when you're very happy. And reflex tears are made up, made in the lacrimal gland, and is made made up mainly of water. The body makes these tears as a reflex to a stimulus.